Greetings, everybody. This is Brian with a special kind of bonus supplemental episode. Uh, Travis, uh, his partner Keely, and another very old friend of ours, Marcus, from the or from our old college days, all just got back from the Star Trek cruise, the Star Trek Seven cruise. Woo uh, and we had Star an, Trek. Star Trek. Star, 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 <laughs> Star Trek. Star Trek. Yes, with the exception of that one song that they played. <laughs> four five six times a day we had an absolute blast and so we thought we'd record a quick supplemental episode to to talk about it uh and tell you how awesome and how uh, great of a time we had so uh with me today is travis hello hello, hello. travis's partner keely why well, hello everybody Say hello and our old friend marcus hello there so um uh yeah uh it was i had a blast um it left so quick recap of what it was it was kind of your standard cruise it was on a royal caribbean ship it left from uh port canaveral with right next to the space center as a matter of fact that we were parked right next to a spacex drone recovery ship so that, that so that was cool uh and then it sailed to uh what were the two places aruba and curacao right yep that's mm -hmm. right um and, just and Brian, couple... correct me if I'm wrong. The only picture you took on the entire cruise was of the SpaceX drone recovery. <laughs> that we were that is correct. I am not a great. I'm. I. I. I actually. I will say that I think I'm a pretty good photographer, all things considered. But the vacation snapshot photographer, I am not. <laughs> uh, so not so much. Hard in, same. Not so much in that regard. Um, but yes, it was cool. It was super cool. So there were a whole slew of, of guests, uh, mostly actors from various Star Trek shows. So I'm just going to rattle some off and I'm going to forget most of them, I'm sure. But there was Nana Visitor, uh, John Delancey, Armin Shimmerman, Will Wheaton, uh, uh, Brett Spiner, uh, Brett Spiner, Spiner Burton. LeVar Burton, Tony Newsom, Eugene Cordero, Anthony uh, Rapp. Anthony Rapp, Doug, it, Jones. Doug Jones, Doug Jones, on and on and on. Uh, just a whole slew. Gates McFadden, uh, <laughs> Denise Crosby, a whole slew of cool people, including not just actors, but um, uh, also the Akudas. Denise and Mike Akuda were there, and they gave a couple of cool uh, presentations on kind of their contribution both to Star Trek and uh, and times after. Uh, Doctor Muhammad were, Noor and Doctor Aaron, Aaron McDonald, yeah. uh, who science advisors both if i if yeah if i'm if i'm not mistaken they're both science advisors for various star trek shows at various points if if i'm yes. right yeah multiple yeah yeah. Uh -huh. yeah uh and aaron mcdonald i know has like been i think it's lower decks or maybe prodigy it's one of the animated shows she's been kind of she has a cameo of sorts in it as an animated version of herself um fun uh um uh, gabrielle what was uh what who's ruiz, ruiz who plays Talin on lower decks um and just all sorts of cool uh, events and opportunities to to hang out with uh, these people and to to uh, to see them do various things, you know, the entertainment shows, but also uh, like Armin Shimmerman did this uh, introduction or mastering Shakespeare class that I went to that was super cool. Tawny Newsom and Eugene Cordero did an improv show. Uh, Sonia Martin Green did um, uh, sushi making. <laughs> She yeah. did. Did you guys go to that? I didn't. I didn't, no, but I saw a lot of video from it. I and that's one of those things you're like. So I, I said this about our um uh, about the entertainment, right? So uh, on a, on a cruise ship, typically, like you have some kind of show at night every night in the ship's theater, and obviously, being a Star Trek themed cruise with all these Star Trek guests, each night was real. You know, usually a Star Trek performer or performers doing something. Uh, and I definitely felt like this, these cruises, or at least this cruise was an opportunity for them to do things that they don't get a chance probably to do in oh, other, sure. in other contexts. Right. So oh yeah, like LeVar Burton and, and Brent Spiner read a couple of stories, just like did read short stories that they really like to do. Anthony Rapp just, uh, he did it like a one man singing show, but he saying whatever the hell he felt like. <laughs> yeah, he literally was like great, so. Here's this he song from Hamilton. There, Go ahead. And yeah, he was like, I he, I will never get cast in the show, but let's do a song from yeah. Hamilton. But, it was so great. But even on that point, so Anthony Rapp and Garrett Wong both did stuff in the casino. 
So yeah, like, really, yeah. Rapp did a poker oh, tournament and Garrett did a craps tournament. Like, yeah, where Actually, you're not going to go to a convention of, and get to do that. The official photo of Anthony Rapp's winning hand. Oh my God. That's going yeah. around from Star Trek, the cruise from Star Trek official, like Paramount property. The photo that they're using Travis uh-huh. took. Yeah. 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 So that was that was courtesy of the fact that none of the professional photographers were around the table when he won. Because <laughs> so, while they were looking, I was the person who pulled out my phone the quickest. So next year you get a print it and you have him sign it. Were you, were you there for like the majority of that poker tournament? For a good portion of it, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I wasn't there for the tournament. I was there on the fi- the final thing because I was going okay. to see our uh, another friend of ours, Tarl, was in the tournament and had made it to the to the table, and so there was like. I think eight people at the table when I showed up um, and then he came out, then he fell out a few hands in um, and then they just, I just watched them sort of whittle down from there. So uh, I think I was there for like an hour or two. Okay. Kind of watching the, a good hour. Good hour. The runner up (laughs) of the tournament was a, was a young gal. She was, I think she was in her like uh, late twenties, early thirties. Oh, cool. So like Anthony Rapp legit, like, like it didn't, it no, didn't no, have he was to be a, a guest to, you know, a, a Star Trek actor had to be the winner. Like, he just legit yeah. won. He just legit yeah, won. Yeah, like, he tournament. does that apparently, so. Yeah. <laughs> I guess what was different about this one is normally they don't let them buy in, so they normally aren't allowed to win. And he asked the table, oh, he's yeah. like, do you mind if I buy in? And they let him, and he legit just was like, all right, oh, yeah. let's go. <laughs> it was actually <laughs> like... He sharked them, for sure, I it was. Bet. It was actually pretty exciting. There was, like, several back and forths where like someone went all in and then he won and then someone went all in and he lost and like like the chip thing was bouncing back and forth hard for several hands uh until he finally like had just he had knocked someone else out and had, his chip pile was so huge it was like okay this is probably not going to take long because he's just going to keep yeah, forcing the person winning. to do it yeah so um and then yeah just the final hand it was like uh it was an he had an a6 and he's like you know he has a huge chip pile and the other person has just a little bit. And he's like, I'm going to go all in because I have an ace. Uh, and they flip it over and literally the the river, which is when they do the first three cards, two more aces came up and they're like, Whoa. okay, we're done. Wow. So <laughs> they just quickly did the last two and was like, yep, you just took it. So <laughs> yeah, it was just a legit win. He just played a good tournament. It was awesome. Good for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good for him. Good for him. Oh. <laughs> I like that. And I don't know whose decision this was. And I don't know Michelle Hurd's personal story. But I also like that Michelle Hurd uh, hosted Mocktail Mixology. And I know that that's very beautiful and thematic for Rafi's character. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know about Michelle Hurd as a person, like if she has yeah that history or whatnot. But I thought that was cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I remember seeing the Sonequa Martin Green sushi thing and just being like, it never would have occurred to me to put Sonequa Martin Green and sushi <laughs> making in the same like mental box in my head. And there's no reason not. It's just the thing that like you would never like that's not gonna be on somebody's IMDB page. That's yeah, not it's gonna really be gonna zombie gonna hunting. It's gonna be yeah. what's it like to be a captain of a starship? <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not gonna come up at your standard kind of convention panel or interview or whatever. Um and for and Marcus, I'm, you you did do one of those, right, Marcus? Sorry to cut you off, Brian, but yeah, no, you did ahead. the the bourbon tasting. Yeah, right? I did the bourbon tasting with uh, Dominic Keating and um, Michael Tr- or Car- uh, Connor Trinier. Trinier. Connor Trinier, yeah, yeah. And so what was How that was it? like? It was okay. Um, they were great, but um, the selection of bourbon on the ship was not great. So <laughs> <laughs> I looked at the list and was like, okay, this is everything I have at home. But so these here- guys are fantastic, and I guess so. Here's uh, a question: Was it not great? For someone who owned a bar for a decade, or not great in general, <laughs> like because like your person. standards are going to be yeah. much higher than like if I had shown up to that. I think I was kind of skewed, you know. Right. I think for the average person, it would have been a lot better. But All the right, fact fair. that they were already drunk during the when, before we even started, <laughs> this, I don't That's know. Like I followed Connor for a while because I love Trip Tucker. Um, being an engineer from Florida, like you know, <laughs> um, but Dominic, I didn't know anything about, and he just cracked me that dude he's a <laughs> loose cannon he is oh my god yeah he has no That's filter awesome. it's it's great and every time he just, he says something that offends somebody he's like i'm british it's like oh, <laughs> okay <laughs> safety net uh-huh well, thing, yeah, it, it that was, kind of brings good. me to this idea around the cruise that i thought was really really cool 
<laughs> in that I got exposure to a lot of these folks whose characters I wouldn't have necessarily picked out of a, a lineup as someone, as a character that I like super connected with and was going to follow so much that I was going to then follow the actor of this character mm -hmm. and like and whatnot. But then like people like Mary Chifo, Mary <clears throat> Chifo, the uh, Klingon in Discovery. Yeah, Discovery. In yeah. Discovery. Yep. Chifo or Chifo? <laughs> Chifo. Chifo. Chifo, I think. Was a huge delight. Hosted, oh, yeah. a, hosted two different karaoke nights, was a, a phenomenal and in, uh, engaging and uh, enigmatic person <laughs> that I would have never gotten to see or really invest in her. And then when I rewatched, I went and rewatched a couple of the episodes because I was like, she had talked about her experience and partnering with Doug Jones to get a little bit more um find ways of being comfortable in that much prosthetic yeah how to yeah. act when you're covered in prosthetics uh, yeah. and yeah. like how when your sweat is sloshing inside of the prosthetics mm. and like she just told all these like wild stories right i then re watched um some clips and some things of the character and connected it to the character differently so that was such a cool thing to bring it 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 was this weird back and forth hype like a, a hype of the thing I already love and the property that I already love and then meeting people mm -hmm. who are cool and different. And then, okay, that makes me reignite a different kind of it. love. Yeah. 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 One, one thing that's definitely very cool, having, having both been to many conventions and, and worked several and like been behind the scenes of some of them, like something that is cool and different about this kind of environment is, and it depends on the person, right? Cause it, it, it varies depending on, on the individual, but some, some of the guests actors that are there, are like way more sociable and accessible a than you would ever find out in a different environment yeah. and b than you would probably ever really expect um any in in any kind of circumstance or context yeah. um so like yeah mary chifo mm -hmm. i saw just around all the time like hanging mm -hmm. out in the hot tub and just chatting and shooting the shit with a bunch of other you know just cruise goers bunch of the nerds uh, I yeah oh she yeah. was outside of the makeup and yeah. i had that, i had that experience where i was yeah. just in the hot tub with a bunch of people and we're all chatting and it wasn't until like four or five lines into the conversation or whatever minutes in the conversation that i was like oh shit oh, that's me that's... Chiba. yeah wait oh, no okay. <laughs> did she just say when she was on the show because this is just a person in a hot tub right, right. now but yeah, yeah. And, that happened with like... me with uh gabrielle rue was on an elevator it was just the two of us going all the way up to the wind jammer and I'm just standing there, just just hanging out. And she gets off, and she held the door. And I look, and I do a double take. I'm like, "Holy shit!" And she's like, "Yeah." It's also, me. Yeah. like, oh, what? and then she started talk. asking me questions about the crew, so she could bring her parents next year. And I'm like, "You're oh, that's so good." That's oh, cool. hell. She is an absurdly oh. talented singer too. Stupid oh my talent. god! Like yeah. she was in for part of that variety show, and like it was just like, "Holy crap!" The voice on that one is amazing. Yeah. She so. it's got her start in musical theater. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I learned. I it was exposed to her from Crazy Ex Girlfriend first, and just so have seen very different sides of her. But man, she her pipes where she carried. <laughs> uh, who'd she do a duet with? Do you remember? It wasn't uh, Doug. Was it Doug? No, it wasn't Doug. Um, I can't anyway, remember who it was. Anyway, yeah, whoever she did the duet with. Uh, she. Oh no, I remember now. It was Robert <laughs> Picardo. Oh, it was Robert Picardo. <laughs> That's right. This was a, a delight and amazing. And um, she was just like this vocal uh, powerhouse who just also then made him look, he still has a good voice too, but mm -hmm. just continued to make him look good the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it's super weird. I, I, I have to say that like, if, and, and I had this thought long before I was ever on the cruise at, in, myself, just this past trip, but like, I'm not sure I could be as awesome if I were one of them in that same context. Mm. Like, like if, if I were, if I were on a show, if I had any kind of like, Oh, there's a small, you know, really dedicated fan base that knows who you are. Would you like to be on a ship with them for a week in which <laughs> you cannot leave? And th they are always around you wherever you go. How would you feel about doing that? Like, I'm not sure. Well, I I could be on board with that, but some so, of these people like go speaking ahead, to the other side of it though, is there, there were a few, a small handful of actors that you did not see mingle with. That anybody. is true. That is yeah. true. Like yeah. there were a couple that I saw just 
every day just on the promenade, just power walking, eyes down. <laughs> they didn't want to yeah. interact with anybody. They didn't want to say hi to anybody. Um, so there, there were there were a handful of those on the ship that, as well, which yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's why I should say that care of their boundaries because I want them. I want them to do the programming, and I want them yeah. to come back so I do have yeah. like the access to them in that space. And mm -hmm. so if that's what they need to do to protect their peace, I'm down for it. And then you've got the other side of it, like the Doug hug, which was oh legend on the cruise. If y'all yeah. haven't gotten a, a hug from Doug Jones, yeah. it is legend. And one of my pride, proudest moments of experiences on the cruise was going to Doug at the end of one of the shows one day. I can't remember exactly uh, which day it was, but <clears throat> I said, hey, Doug, you know, your hugs are legendary. You're aware of this, right? And he's like, oh, thank you so much. That's so kind. And like, yes, and whatnot. And I was like, and I just want you to know that as a professional, and it sounds like a bit, but as someone who <laughs> cuddles people for my occupation, my living, my career, and ha to have that many people be appreciative of and in praise of your hugs, I just you got the stamp of approval from a professional. And it was so funny because he took it in such stride and he cracked up. It was so great. It was one of my favorite I will say yeah. my sister missed getting her Doug hug and she was very upset at oh, that. No. But yeah. but we are going next year. You guys are going next year, right? Marcus? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we are all signed year. up. Yep. So yep. we all so, signed up. Yeah. Fingers yep. crossed that Doug is is there as well and she'll get another chance at it. Here's um, open, yeah. Fill out your surveys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we, we were on the fence until the final day, and it was like just the the cost when you go when you buy it there is so much less. We were like, oh, okay, yeah. I guess we're doing yeah. this. So, that's, so. that's honestly like the one like note of caution I would give to somebody if they were like thinking about going is because they do they do such a good job of making it so attractive to like to sign up for the next year before you leave that like yeah. if you try this you're probably gonna like get stuck to it because <laughs> we were this, yeah. my, like my family and I so I, I strong I, retention rate yeah there's like yeah like if if you're gonna try it, be prepared to to feel like I absolutely have to do this again next year. Uh, Conversely, my family was the same way. Go ahead. Just to offer another another perspective on that, the hardest or the biggest financial barrier, uh, experience barrier is the first time. So just oh. also another way to look at that is like the most challenge you will have making this thing happen is going to be the first time you do it. And then yeah. from there on out, it is way easier. I think we saved almost a thousand dollars per person because of all of the stacking, like um, oh, yeah. discounts and blah well, and whatnot. With the, the room that I got for next year, it is a thousand dollars per person plus <laughs> the internet package, which was like a few hundred dollars, $250 a person, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so then, Talking yeah, to, um, yeah, no, just real quick, talking to, we all, I think, interacted with groups on the cruise, and mm -hmm. there were groups yeah. that we were partying with that have been doing this since cruise one and two, mm -hmm. and that's the yeah. reason is because every year it gets a little cheaper for them as they go, plus you get the the um, Royal Caribbean points and you get all this stuff, so it, it's it's brought people together. It's basically like these people's Dragon Con. It's, it's what yeah. they do every year, and I thought, and I thought like, that was super cool. And yeah, definitely like when you watch the videos for the pitch, it's all this like, yeah, it feels small and you're going to be running into people left it's and right lovely. and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, okay, yeah, sure. We get that. But no, it absolutely was, was totally that. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, it, and like, so it does have a, it does have a Dragon Con feel of the sense. Like we all, it does, we do yeah. Dragon Con every year. Marcus, you used to do Dragon Con regularly. Um, and Dragon Con is like, it feels so intimate because it's everybody within like a two block radius and this mm -hmm. definitely had that sort of feel where it's like everybody just kind of throws on a robe and walks to the wind jammer to get breakfast because everyone's exhausted and doesn't yeah. care <laughs> and so yeah it's definitely but dialed like, up because it's a smaller number of people go ahead brian well i was yeah so I, the way i've tried to describe so as you said we've all gone to dragon con for years and this, that's kind of our yearly uh con and the way I've tried to describe Dragon Con to people who have experience with that, let's say like Comic Con or Wonder Con or something, but not necessarily Dragon Con, is to tr tr try yeah. to convey that uh, that different atmosphere, that that sense of like, yeah, you're just gonna have to walk around and see who you and and you mm -hmm. know do whatever, run and, into people that have been doing this for a decade, exactly, and run into whoever you run into and just kind of whatever. Um, and just have a good time as opposed to like at a convention like Comic-Con where you're sort of like walking up and down the aisles of the show or whatever. You're going uh, to yeah. something. 
Exactly. And yeah, as opposed to being in a place, you're going to this place. And yes, I like I feel like the the Star Trek cruise was the closest to that Dragon Con experience I've had in that kind of um, yeah. ballpark of fan fan spaces. Now, for well, you and... for you guys, uh, Travis and Keeley, this was your first cruise ever, right? Yeah, first yeah. cruise oh. ever. Oh, wow. Marcus? So, uh, and, you, but, you yeah, been Marcus, on a this was your first Star Trek cruise, but not your first cruise. Yeah, yeah. And I've done yeah. other nerd cruises, too. I did the Joker oh, okay. cruise a okay. times. So how does, okay. the, how does this compare? Well, maybe I shouldn't ask this because I remember you talking a little bit about it. But uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it friendly. Don't worry. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> no, it, as far as a cruise itself, so the two Joko cruises I did, one, the first one was Royal Caribbean. I think it was actually the same ship. Um, <laughs> and then we went fun. to, I think norwegian um but hands down the star trek cruise was just better in every aspect um yeah. you know even when joko had the entire ship there was no theming there was you know we were running into people every night the fact that i think keely made friends within like two days you know we're <laughs> well, looking yeah. over and she's just well, like that's keely. out with people that's, yeah that's that's keely and she's never going to change yeah. <laughs> but uh <laughs> that didn't happen on the joko because it, it wasn't a, it wasn't like one specialized nerd group it was well, I guess the Jonathan Colton nerd group, which if you like him as a singer, sure. But it was yeah. a lot more broad. So people didn't really mesh and mingle as much. Mm -hmm. um, and the the act the, the guests weren't out like they were on this one either. The guests kind of all mm -hmm. to the point where even during the main dining, all of the guests on the Joko cruise had their own private table that they all ate at. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, okay. yeah, it, it was it was drastically different. This was much more focused on the fans. And I think Joko was focused on Jonathan Colton's vacation, honestly. Uh, yeah. So. Interesting. The, you mentioned the theming and like, well, I haven't mentioned it. We haven't mentioned it yet, but like True. the theming on this cruise was awesome. There was, yep. they Star Trekified the hell out of that ship and mm -hmm. all sorts of just great little flair here and there. Uh, all of the elevators had turbo lift signs on them. Um, yeah, it was just the casino mats for the bottom, like if you're playing craps or if you're playing, you know, roulette or whatever, the mat on the table at the casino was cork themed. Yeah. Like it was, it was so, quark's so casino. Cool. It yeah. was quark's casino. Yeah. There was the gore, the gregarious gore, and there was the trekky tiki um, mm -hmm. for the tiki bar. There it was it was so wonderfully consistently thematic throughout the whole thing there were standees like the cardboard stand-ups of different people in different places that you could take pictures there were picture ops that they planned in so that you could enjoy that um so much throughout the cruise uh even down to the i, I didn't know this no one prepped me for this going in they give you a souvenir of some sort every single night so yeah when the, i didn't know that when either housekeeping I had no idea. I was so nope. thrilled. Wait, it, when house like on the third day, world, we're like, they leave oh, something. I guess this is a thing. This is a thing, yeah. And it was, I think it was like the third or fourth day when it was the big straw hat. And it was like, <laughs> oh, I did not pack anticipating this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got poster, yeah. a giant bag, a straw hat. We the got license plates. License uh, plates that were really cool. Passport holders or, or wallets. Yeah, wallets, yeah. Yeah. And then you could spot all the people on their way home at the airport because they were the wearing, wearing the straw hats. <laughs> it was like, yep, know where you came from. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mentioned this before we started recording, but because I was coming back to Los Angeles uh, on my particular flights, was about half of the the actors uh, that were guests Which on the cruise. Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was Delancey and Visitor and Billingsley and Wheaton and Crosby and uh, one or two others, I think. But, um, yeah. One thing, one thing that we haven't mentioned yet is that there each day is a theme, and so you yeah. have different well, like so you guys costumes did... or events. Go ahead. Well, so you guys did a lot more of the events and stuff than I did because I don't like humans. You are a cat. Yes, I'm a cat. <laughs> uh, I'll just be over here with my book. Thank you. Uh, so Can but I pause yeah, you real quick. I have a private collection only. This is not going to be available to Patreon subscribers. So sorry, Starship Tempest. But um, I have a compilation of Ryan Knapps uh. on my phone of photos. Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, that does not exist. We are moving on. Um, yeah, so you guys did a lot more of those events. So talk, yeah. talk a little bit about those and your experience with them. 
I loved them. I thought they were so the couple of the events just to kind of give you or the themes I should say to give you a taste of um one was like return to Riza. And so it was very tiki themed. It was very tropical themed. One of them was a masquerade night. And so you had really gallant, um, li like beautiful gowns and it was a gala event, formal wear. There was one that is every single year they have a Q's costume party. And so that is it. There's a costume party on the contents. There's a rave night. Um, they're, they do such a good job throughout uh, weaving the themes. There, there's a pirate night. I got to do my <laughs> pirate costume. It so was there, really, so really on fun. The, the thing on the pirate night to think about for next year. So that's actually a, an event. Um, it's like a holodeck night. And we get to vote on that every year. So this year we voted and it was the pirate theme. So next oh. year it's going to be different. But the idea is the entire ship for that night is turned into a holodeck where everybody is dressed up like holiday characters so the year before right. this it was um like ren fair you know how all the the original series like had no budget yeah. so they're like yeah. these aliens are all dressed like they're from the medieval times that was the the holodeck theme for the previous year so i'm looking forward to so voting on i it. see i didn't realize that do you, how does one go they about send out a, a survey oh they, they, yeah they send out an email like i think around like august okay um and you've already to... gotten our email if you've already booked so there yes. is a survey that already happened yeah okay yeah i, I mean, climbed the rock wall so how about that <laughs> oh yeah i mean i did yeah. too sort of yeah um bit. yeah so disclaimer for anybody on the cruise make sure you wear sunscreen yes yeah. oh, because i did I mean, not any any kind and it of... destroyed my entire trip Oh, yeah. I mean, any, I didn't get to any climb the Caribbean wall. cruise, you should really bring. Well, I was supposed to be there for 30 minutes reading my book like a Brian. And then I <laughs> ran into Keely. And then we ran into Travis. And next thing, 30 minutes turns into three hours. And that's, yep. I have second degree burns on my legs. So that's, the, yeah, yeah, that's the thing yep. is. How's that which, healing, bud? <laughs> oh, it's great. No, it's, it's all good now. But yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So all of my theme night costumes I couldn't wear. I couldn't. Couldn't go running. Sure. Couldn't do the rock wall. It was. I'm trying to figure out this run year, for fun. Run for run fun. For fun. Oh, but okay. We haven't even talked about this piece. There is um the so we've talked about how people encounter this like it's Dragon Con, like a family thing, right? And so in that vein, there is a ten or a five k that you can run on the ship, and people give you medals, and but it's mm -hmm. all fan run. There's also a door decorating contest mm -hmm. for people who don't know all these doors and these uh, walls are metallic on a cruise ship. And so there is this a really fun camaraderie and um, community aspect of like swag, hiding swag, just like Dragon Con, decorating your door, having different interactive elements to it. And like, there if you want to go run thing. every day, then someone's going to give you a medal if you join their like, do the like running thing. Mm -hmm. there, there was a what marcus a there was duck? a duck thing mm -hmm. what was the duck thing so um people would hide these little rubber duckies all over the ship with tags with like clues and then a room number and if you figured it out you could go to the room number and get a prize but mm -hmm. they were oh, just fun. all over the all over it was crazy no idea. hey we gave out no a duck as the prize to our trivia contest we held a tempest themed trivia contest by having the questions on our particular door and we got, I think it was eight or nine answers respondents nice. on there. Um, the person who won, I think, got two or three out of the five correct. So we went and dropped off their their John Luke Ducktard, which was the little <laughs> John Luke Ducard ducky. Um that's the thing. I mean, I, I said this on the boat, but like I I am sure that there were Tempest fans on there somewhere, and we didn't run into anybody, but I would bet money. The, the, I mean, when we were, were dropping that off she specifically said uh, it had been a while since i've listened but and that, yeah. that was how she guessed some of them right so i was like okay well you've at least heard of it so i'll take it well so if you're out there and you are on the cruise and you come across this one way or the other drop us a line on social media or something and let us know that you were there we've already said we're going to be there next year so definitely like uh there, well, come say hello there's also the thing which i didn't i had plans to do and didn't end up doing but in the kind of i think what they called it the observation lounge right the mm -hmm. the bar that kind of has that view over the top of the ship they had fan run uh kind of fan organized uh events and things there yeah. so um i 
again, I didn't end up doing anything. I had thought about it and sort of intended to, but next year I definitely, what I definitely want to do is run some kind of intro to playing Star Trek adventures or role-playing game, Star Trek stuff, maybe do a one shot or something like that. Uh, yeah. up there. Cause I think, I mean, yeah, I we still want to awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We want to do that. We, Oh, that was the one event that we didn't mention was the, uh, the D and D game that we watched. Oh yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Week, doing the GM running a little D and D can, uh, one shot with a handful of actors. And that was a good time. And we were just sitting there going like, we could totally do this. We did this. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. We could totally do this. So, uh, yeah. So who was that? That was Todd Stash. Long term goals. Um, uh, Michelle Hurd. Aaron uh, Rapp. Rapp. And Anthony, Anthony Rapp. Rapp and her pal. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Yeah. And that was and that was just a regular like D and D environment mm-hmm. setup. It wasn't even a Star Trek thing or anything. Yeah. Uh, but that was that was a ton of fun. And then along those lines, um, we could Star uh, Trek the crap out of that. <laughs> uh, Tawny Newsom and Eugene Cordero did. Uh, a couple of improv shows that were super awesome and yep. they, they also wished you a happy birthday at uh yeah Tony's birthday. Tony 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 did. And, yes. uh, brian finifter's birthday are one day apart true, and so tony yes. wished brian finifter before the stroke of midnight which was her birthday and she hosted a big birthday bash and a birthday party uh that was very very fun it was a good time uh yeah that's well that's the other thing that we didn't uh talk about at all which is the fact that it was happens to have occurred over my birthday and next year's so this year the second day was my birthday uh, but next year the first day will be my birthday so th- okay. this is this is why at least my family and I went initially it was you know my birthday present more or less um and then you guys decided to come too and play because we're followers yay <laughs> uh, well now i'm contractually ob- obligated to always be there at brian's birthdays because i have been for the last three years and so yeah because as, as i said I as we were boarding i realized uh, realized in the while well, in the process of boarding i was like wait a second because killy just happened to be out in la over my birthday for the previous two years and so mm-hmm. being an awesome person she was like oh I'll come out and we'll, i'll buy you a drink um and so now that's officially three years in a row so you're now obligated it's a pattern yeah conversely i had no idea you guys were going on the cruise until about a week before when (laughs) travis messaged me like you're going on that too and i'm like what yeah well we didn't know until twitter told us and (laughs) yeah i think i saw you post something about it uh marcus and i was like wait a second marcus is going to be on the cruise Ah." (laughs) yeah and then uh i mean i didn't know how it tight knit it was going to be so i'm like i'll probably see them once or twice and literally on the the ramp to get on i just <laughs> yeah. see like the shock of red hair out of the corner of my eye and i was like oh who's that and okay. then i see brian <laughs> and, and, like, then, oh, and then i hear somebody shout finifter which is like one of, is 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 not a common name <laughs> but that was one of the few contexts in which i was standing next to two other people who would also answer to that name yeah uh, my, my mother and sister um at least my sister's maiden name uh so yeah it was like wait somebody said my name but also in this moment it's not just my (laughs) name it may not be mine (laughs) it may not be for me what is happening (laughs) i mean it's it's like oh maybe we won't run into them but i mean like we're all pretty veterans of things of like dragon con where there's eighty thousand people in three in like two square blocks the idea that there was probably only a couple thousand people on that boat it's like oh we're gonna run into each other constantly there yeah (laughs) just the way that that works so Mm -hmm. And it makes it better. It makes it better to experience it with people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I will tell anybody, too, who's thinking about going, like, going by yourself is probably going to be fantastic. Going with a group of people made everything just so much better. Because waking up in the morning and just getting on that little messenger and be like, what are you doing today? What are you doing tonight? What are you doing right now? It just, it kept the party kind of going, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's also something really interesting that like Travis and I talked about this on the boat. So my family and I, we've done a lot of cruises over the years. And there's something that I definitely like about cruises and specifically days where you're at sea in which you kind of force, even if you do have the Internet, which you can you can buy these days, uh, you're still forced to kind it's of not unplug. Good internet. <laughs> it's not good Internet. Yeah. So you're at least halfway unplugged. Um, and there's sort of this uh you, you you go back into this pre-internet pre-smartphone age where you where you have to be like 
hey, do you want to do something later? Okay, let's meet at X mm-hmm. place at Y time. And, and you okay. do that. And you do that. And like, I just have to trust that the other person is going to to be there at that time. Right. Uh, and, you know, it's... How it's, 90s of us. Yeah, it's a, it's a very odd, like, 90s, kind of a halfway 90s feel, but just at sea. And within, like, it's it's almost like a college feeling, right? Like, mm-hmm. if, if the yeah. ship is, like, your dorm room building, your dorm yeah. building, yeah, and you were in the 90s or early 2000s, it's like, yeah, it's like, okay, what, you want to meet at the cafeteria in half an hour to get dinner? Yeah, sure. But then you just have to show up half an hour later and do it um and if someone doesn't make it you go oh i don't know what happened but i'm just gonna eat now so why not uh probably got sucked into a craps game with anthony (laughs) or uh garrett wong you know (laughs) you go oh there's there's john delancey all right cool yeah yeah there's a really fun like serendipity kind of uh randomness to it that i think like modern technology has sort of sucked out of most of our daily lives of experiences that you sort of get back a little bit in that in that context which is just it's a lot of fun and there's even a like a cruise specifically this cruise culture for instance there's the kapla mm. table oh my right? god and, so, and there's traditions just as we have seen in other spaces there's traditions that are so specific to this venue these people the mm-hmm. space that are so fun to be exposed to and then get to experience. And I, there were people who I, you know, I met on this cruise that I'm now planning different costumes with for New Year, yeah. for different years down the road or whatever. There's one gal I met, she met, she made like four different of the amazing costumes that almost won the costume contest just because she's an amazing cosplayer and a Trekkie and a mate and just really, really cool. So the the amount of fans who are so invested in a genuine beautiful and connected and social kind of a way was really mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well and everybody is just so welcoming yeah. Um, yeah. especially when yes. they learn it's your first one you you mentioned the the <laughs> table so the the bar that they were outside of the gregarious gorn is the irish pub on the ship and it's always been um i think it's been called kapla for years so that's how that started and I think it was oh, okay. night three. I'm walking through and they did the whole Kapla thing. I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit down and have a Guinness, whatever. And I sat out there and they would just absorb me into the group. And we were complying <laughs> people as we go by and the, the crew staff would Kapla back. And I was like, wow, I don't have any idea who these people are. I've never met them before. And it's just, they absorbed you into your this. immediately family. Yeah. And that reminds me of another thing. Did you guys notice the collective I yeah, saw, yeah, I yeah. saw like the cruises. ceremony at the end. Michelle yeah. heard like officiating or inducting them or, mm-hmm. or something, but I didn't know so, what it was exactly. On your on your fifth cruise, you get inducted into the collective, um, oh, which no. gets you into this group where you have like private events. I think you have a private dinner. You get a special lanyard. You get a, a thing every year. Like this year, they got a big flag. Um, they've gotten hats, stuff like that. But it's it's another aspect of like just a neat little niche group who have been doing this for five years or five cruises and there's only been seven of these so yeah. like this is like there's not a lot of people in that particular group yet it's uh-huh. slowly filling out so yeah well mm-hmm. shit now i have a new thing i have to <laughs> yeah it's a yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. also i learned what a silent disco is which is a like mm-hmm. was not was not completely alone on this particular to this particular cruise but it was wild which so, yeah, for those who don't my- know uh, that is uh, yeah. where you go to a party and it's a normal dance party where it's like just music playing, except it's not over speakers. Everybody wears headphones. And so if you're standing there and you take the headphones off, it looks ridiculous and hilarious. <laughs> and there are at least shuffling noises and some like light murmur. <laughs> yeah. Like what happens when you take off the ADR or the off of the, like of the background sound of a movie, right? When you take out the music and blah, blah. And so it's just like shuffling noises and whatnot. Why did you thumbs down it, Ryan? Yeah. No, it's I didn't do a thing. Yeah, it appeared on my screen, but I don't know what that was. Do this for me. Please do this for me. Um, I and... li- oh, what the hell is happening? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening right now? Zoom does all sorts of weird things when you make hand gestures. Yeah. For those who are listening and not able to see what we're talking about. I had no idea Zoom did this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for indulging me in that. Yeah. <laughs> And then also if you do the hearts thing. At any rate, 
At any rate, uh, so you've got the shuffling noises, right? And then it, you've got different stations, though, which was my favorite aspect of it. Thanks for letting me hijack this uh, conversation. The I mean, I'm, I'm going to need a minute to have my mind blown here. So you just go. You just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just keep talking. You just for the enjoy listeners the at home, Brian no is making a bunch of hand gestures right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so the different channels of this music are obviously the same, like, beats per minute. Right. And so everyone can keep moving to the same and they're not like bumping into each other awkwardly, but they could be varying widely in their genre. Yeah. So you could be listening to like Sir Mix a lot and then time after time or something <laughs> like that. Like it's just the weirdest juxtapositions that I think at one point it was the YMCA and to the window, to the wall. Like that was literally the juxtaposition of it. But just as long as the same beats per minute, you're all dancing to the same thing. Yeah, it is a wild time. So that was a fun experience. We, we we have those uh at yuri's night we always we always have them and like oh, okay. um at the la events at least and uh because i'm always organizing like i'm always running around doing different things but every now and then i will like walk into the silent disco room and like i don't have time to participate or anything because i gotta go off and do other stuff but it's like yeah it's very much that feeling of like you're standing in a very quiet room with people who are you know dancing and moving and and partying as if there is a crap ton of energy in the room that you that would be at any rave or concert yeah. or kind of situation but you as just the outside observer are not getting any of that energy you're just it's it's awesome it. well, it's, it's very very surreal what was neat yeah. about this one you know kiwi mentioned the two channels but the uh the headsets would light up blue or green depending on what you were listening to mm -hmm. so to look out on the dance floor and see blue and then everybody just shift over to green in like a wave. And then 30 <laughs> seconds later, back to blue. And yep. a couple of people were green. And you're just, you're, I spend more time cycling through to hear what these people were dancing to than <laughs> anything else. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was a good time. And so speaking of the, the family aspect, one of the things that definitely stuck out, stuck out to me at this that I don't think I would have, re again, realized in another context is... Something that I think is pretty unique, maybe, to Star Trek as a franchise, which is, like, so uh, I, one of the things, uh, one of the events was Armin Shimmerman, who is a legit Shakespeare scholar and teaches Shakespeare at university level, right? Like, that's what he does now. Yeah. Uh, he did a, basically, a little uh, presentation slash class, like, taste, you know, a moose-bouche of that. Uh, where you're like, okay, this is how you read Shakespeare and this is how it's it's done and how you actually analyze and everything. Uh, and he uh, he had uh, Connor Trenier and Dominic Keating there. And so it was Trip. Dom Trip is Dominic, right? No, Trip is Connor. No, Trip is Connor. Trip mm -hmm. is Connor Trenier. Uh, so he had Connor there and like come down and read, you know, uh, I think it was a sonnet, one of Shakespeare's sonnets and was kind of like going through it. Uh, but then uh, Dominic was also there just kind of sitting in the audience and uh, Armin was like going back and forth with him in terms of, you know, because Dominic being British and Shakespeare and all of that, like the sh the British perspective on this versus the American perspective and, and all of that. And so that really like that opened my eyes to the sense of that. For the actors in Star Trek, it's, it, must, it must be this really weird sense of extended family of, like, all these people you know that you go to all these events with. You go to different conventions. You go to Comic-Con or Dragon-Con or, you know, Awesome-Con or whatever it is. Um, and, like, you know and you have a relationship with these people, even though, like, so, for example, Armin Shimmerman and Anna Visitor were both there. They were actual actual coworkers on the same show for seven years, right? And so we yeah. had scenes and worked together every day as coworkers. But Connor Trenier and Armin Chimmerman were never they were both in a Star Trek show, but not the same one. They yeah. were never like they never were working in the same building in the same scene together ever, right? There but were they people were... that were separated by years and years exactly. of Exactly. Exactly, mm -hmm. right? So, like, Walter Koenig was there. He was the only one from the original series there, but he was there. Uh, and you had, basically, I think, with maybe the exception of Prodigy and Strange New Worlds, and Strange New Worlds, because they were actually literally filming while the cruise was happening. Yeah. But I, th I think, other than those, you had somebody from every single 
uh, TV show of Star Trek going back to the original series. Uh, yeah. And be because of the environment and the context and the way you got to share the space with them in a way that you wouldn't necessarily in like a typical convention, a conventional convention, you might even say, um, you can see... <laughs> you could see them like you could see that kind of extended family dynamic happen um in a way that was just like very i don't know that it's, it struck me as something very very cool of like yeah there's bob picardo and anthony rapp like hanging out and doug jones and gabrielle Rua, you know and just like again these people they comment on it they even comment on it in several of the panels in the uh, specific um discovery panel that i attended <laughs> one of the things that Sonequa Martin Green uh, talked about alongside Anthony Rapp in their experience of being in one of the pretty much newest series to kick us off this era mm -hmm. of yeah, new track that did yeah it. yeah Discovery yeah. is the first new yeah mm -hmm. how uh, I, I, this is a thing that Anthony Rapp said he said you know at the very first convention thing that any of us did after the first season blah 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 we had a fan come up at the end of our panel and say, welcome to the family. And then he talked about his experience. That was the jumping off point for him to talk about his experience of how true that felt to him and how that yeah. landed like a hammer. Because so many moments, Doug Jones will talk about when he was going on the red carpet for Shape of Water, he was right in front of... Um, Patrick Stewart. Sir Patrick Stewart. <laughs> Sir and Patrick turned, Stewart. Sir Patrick Stewart. And he turned around and he said, you know, I'm in the newest version of a Star Trek. And, he, and I, I think Patrick Stewart said something like, oh, I hope you know what you're in for. <laughs> and it was just, they all have these wonderful stories of sharing this camaraderie with this extended family that they never had had grasped what it would mean when they said yeah. yes to the the job that they yeah to, to this gig and mm -hmm. yeah to this very specific all right this gig which might last an episode it might last seven years this the network might say no it sucks it's done and then i'm an you unemployed might actor again Star Trek legacy yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean it, that also struck me like so like i said a bunch of the actors were on my flight back to los angeles and so yeah i watched some of them Again, some of whom who did, you know, work together on the same show day in and day out, and some of whom never appeared on screen together, but just as very like, oh, hey, wh so what did you guys do on your, you know, the day off between getting off this boat and coming here? And, oh, we went and did this. We had lunch at this place, blah, blah, blah. Like, it would just, it, it just struck me as something that must be, that at the very least is very special and quite possibly unique in the sense of, this community of people that spans decades and uh yeah, you know, star trek specific specific to star trek this is the community of performers and actors and creators um and the cool thing about the cruise is you got to in, in interface into that dynamic in a way that i don't think is really possible in any other context anywhere else no yeah else. yeah um totally agree so that it, we're coming up on about an hour. Did anybody else have yeah. any uh, things you wanted to kind of go over, gush about, complain about anything before we wrap it up? Uh, I have a just... teaser. Go oh, ahead. Okay. Go, go, go. Tease us. Tease us, Keely. Tease us. <laughs> if anyone, so when you're plugging this uh, Tempest Talks, you can tell everyone that I have a tip for anyone who goes on the cruise who wants the most free celeb one-on-one -on -one time Ooh. i have a tip i have a tip for having the most free celeb. i really <laughs> am so sorry for yeah. this the, the talent um about noon ish plus or minus an hour the gym and the spa you go around noon ish plus or minus an hour to the gym or to the onboard spa every single one of the talent is there now don't don't fuck with someone while they're you know working out there, right yeah. but you could be right next to someone on an elliptical just running <laughs> or if you pay for the classes you could be in a workout yoga class with michelle her just sweating it out next to each other and having chats while you do it so that's my that's my undercover you'll never know it unless you try it or if you go to the spa area there's like a like lovely waiting area when well, i was in there waiting to get my hair done uh at least eight 
at least eight other of the talent were there too about ready to get their facials or massages or whatever chase masterson was there like there's so many people you heard it here first yep. folks good first to know and last probably yep. <laughs> uh but that is a hell of a cruise tip uh right. the only reason i say it is because starship tempest isn't that big because otherwise i'd keep it to myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that'll be black good job for that <laughs> Yeah, like, way that, that was a really undercut, system. like, Keely's like, I'm going to give it, I'm going to take it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else, guys, or shall we wrap it up? What do you think? Yeah, yeah I think let's I wrap it up. I was just going to mention for anyone yeah, thinking about sure. going next year, it is the 30th anniversary of Voyager, I think. <gasps> oh, yeah, that's, so oh, that's big pretty Voyager sure they have, next year. They have almost the entire cast, including Jerry Ryan and Kate Mulgrew. Yeah. Um, and from what I've heard in the past, because they, they did an anniversary for DS9 as well, um, they do a lot of events focused on that specific show. So you're probably going to get awesome. a photo op of the entire crew. Um, you're probably going to have a panel with the entire crew. There's probably going to be a couple of theme nights. So Voyager is your jam. Yeah. It is well worth It's going to be better. I got to rewatch it all. That is, a, that is a good point. Yeah. If, if you're a Voyager fan, then you definitely want to think about making the cruise work for you next year because cruise that's number eight yeah star mm -hmm. trek cruise eight first contact <laughs> star they, don't, trek. they don't actually use the star, star trek, trek, star trek. Cruise. oh boy that that's that is my one <laughs> that's my one note my one negative note i said on the on the bus ride to the airport you know my mom was like so you know did you have a good time and i said my only complaint is that it's over actually that's not true i have two complaints <laughs> It's You're mad that they don't have a collector's physical <laughs> media copy of that song, right? Ooh, like a, a two sided yeah. LP. Yeah, that those are my complaints. That it was over, and that song. Uh, fun fact. Nope. Yeah. Fun fact about that song is that yeah. they do that song, but replace the theme for every other. So like eighties, eighties. Are you serious? Cruise. Yeah. Hundred percent. 100%. You are not every You're... theme, they'll have the exact same that like th song go on. Yeah, also, no. the 80s cruise yeah. got all the same gifts that we did, just 80s themed. Uh -huh. So, there is a straw hat with an 80s cruise patch <laughs> on it. There was the bag, there was the uh -huh. card holder. Yeah, that, that's the other thing. Is obviously, there are more, there are more theme cruises out there than just this one. One is an 80s cruise, which like start. I don't know if it's this is every year or if it was just this year, but like. The 80s cruise was immediately after the Star Trek it's, cruise. It's every year. Okay. Yes. So they had already like started switching things over as as we were getting off the boat. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you're like a super Star Trek fan and a super 80s fan, then take a long one. <laughs> yeah. You got a, a awesome two week cruise uh, in front of you if you want to do it. So, all right. We will wrap it up there, everybody. Thanks for joining us for this special bonus supplemental episode. Thank you to Travis and Keely and Marcus for joining me to, to talk about it. Uh, thank you to my family for giving me an awesome birthday present of taking me there in the first place. Um, and thanks for listening. And we will uh, see you guys out there. Maybe even out there on the Star Trek cruise. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.